Good morning, everybody. It's great to have so many folks today joining us on this webinar all about TikTok. You know, as it happens, uh, not only is TikTok eating the world, TikTok is eating all of us as well. There are more than 700 people uh, on today's webinar. So we're delighted to have you from wherever you're joining us in the world. Uh, many of you uh, in the US where I am based, many of you abroad, uh, which is wonderful to see. So thanks all for joining. Uh, let me go ahead and jump in with just a little uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Dan, and I will be covering a whole host of topics today all around TikTok. Uh, everything you came for, uh, everything you will come away with is going to be covered very, very um, substantively in these four areas, these four topics. So what I want to impart, what I want to impart uh, to everyone today on today's webinar is uh, wherever you are on this journey with TikTok, we're all at different points. It's impossible to address every one of you individually. So I want to make sure you come away with a, a, a broad view into TikTok and also a deep view into TikTok. And that's what we're going to cover today across these topics. Fundamentals, first and foremost, just level sets everybody uh, in terms of uh, what TikTok is, how it works, who's on it. Um, we dispel a few myths along the way. Then we get into the section on content and creative, right? This is where the fun stuff happens. Uh, what kind of content really works on TikTok? Uh, how to maximize your presence and your return on ad spend on TikTok? Uh, and then we're gonna dive into measuring, which is really probably the most important part of today's session. We're gonna talk all about uh, campaign measurement, attribution, and tying ad spend on TikTok to real world results. So if you are a, a brick and mortar retailer, or if you are in the brick, the brick and mortar uh, business of any kind, restaurants, uh, casinos, movie theaters, any, any type of uh, brick and mortar location, we're gonna be focusing a lot of today's webinar on tying that ad spend uh, on the digital platform that is TikTok to offline behavior, which is your stores or your locations or your restaurants. And we're gonna tell that story actually through the lens of a campaign example I have at the end of today's webinar, featuring what many of us call influencers, but what others on the TikTok uh, side of the house might call a creator. So I'll be using a lot of terms throughout today's webinar that may be somewhat new to you. Uh, I will try to, to you know, be as clear as possible but in this world of TikTok, the rules are being rewritten, right? Which means there's a new vocabulary in a lot of ways uh, for what we're doing on TikTok. Along the way, of course, you're going to have questions. Anything that comes up in your mind at any point, uh, I'm happy to answer. Uh, at Reveal Mobile here, where I work, we think all about uh, social platforms. We think all about foot traffic. We think all about retail. We think all about ad agencies and paid media. So any of those topics that you're thinking about in line with those or even outside of those boundaries, are welcome, right? Anytime you have a question, just pop the question into the questions box and I'll get to those here at the end of today's webinar. I suspect, depending on how many questions we have, uh, we'll wrap up certainly before the hour, but uh, maybe in the next 45 minutes or so, you'll all be able to get back to your jobs with a whole host of rich TikTok insights. So with that, let me begin with the basics. Again, wherever you are on this journey, I wanna make sure everybody understands just the blocking and tackling fundamentals around what TikTok is and how it presents in the world. So the first thing you need to know is that it is radically different from all the other social platforms that you're, you're, you're using today or you're advertising on today. And for the sake of simplicity, I wanted to lay it out in very clear terms for you, right? So think about Twitter, regardless of who owns it or how it's gonna evolve. Twitter was born on the notion of words. It's the 140 character platform as it was. Uh, certainly it has evolved from that point, but Twitter was, or sorry, Twitter was sort of born on this notion of um, how can I make the most impact with the fewest amount of words, right? Uh, and then Facebook and Instagram, uh, in their own way, uh, are on the scene as picture or image-based platforms. So their major stock in trade, of course, is share, image sharing, right? Posting and then commenting, liking all the rest. And these are still images. And then you move over to YouTube, of course, and they are the prime mover. They are the OG in the video space, right? Uh, before it was owned by Google, it was a massively popular platform. Google bought it some 15 years ago and has turned it into the monolith that it is today. And of course, its core value is in video, right? User-generated content. Well, that probably sounds to you a lot like TikTok, 
but TikTok is not videos. Interestingly enough, TikTok was born in the world of sound. So what distinguishes TikTok is not necessarily all the, the, the moving images you see and the videos you like and comment on, but the soundtrack beneath it. So a lot of today's webinar is gonna be focused on using music, using sound as a differentiator in your own creative around TikTok and, and inspiring people to take action, uh, uh, to, right, to visit your store, to come to your restaurant, whatever the case might be. In fact, TikTok, TikTok has made such a name for itself in the sound realm that uh, Adweek has called it the 21st home of the 21st century jingle. So imagine that, right? Here you have a platform that used to be called Musical.ly, it is now called TikTok, uh, and it's still having huge success as a diff differentiated platform vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, music. So here's a little bit of a, of a, a myth buster for you. We all know TikTok is massively popular with teenagers, with children, as we, as we might call them. Um, and that's true. That is absolutely true. There's no, there's no making that up. There's no, there's no pretending. Uh, fact of the matter is, though, the majority of users in, tic, uh, in the U.S. of, of TikTok, uh, all 138 million of them, are full-grown adults with disposable income. So you can see here on this chart that of the um, 138 million active users in the US of TikTok, only 45 million of them are between 10 and 19. The other nearly 100 million users are folks with jobs and folks with money to spend, right? So when you're thinking about advertising on this platform, it's not a foregone conclusion that you are reaching only teenagers or only children. Truth of the matter is, you are reaching for the majority um, full grown adults who are on the platform along with their kids, right? So here we are all on this platform together. And what's also interesting is that not only are people consuming content on TikTok in massive numbers in the US, they're also creating content in massive numbers in the US. 83% of users have actually posted content themselves. So that has to include, of course, more than just uh, the children since only uh, you know 32% of users are in that, in that uh, child group. The other 68%, 67.5% are also posting content. So it's a platform that is highly attractive in terms of its uh, usability and its, and its shareability. And this is actually just how impressive a platform it is. Imagine this, every day of your life watching a movie. Could you imagine doing that every single day, Monday through Sunday, putting a movie on and sitting down and watching the entire thing? Well, I've got news for you. This is what most of us on TikTok are actually doing. We are spending a movie's worth of time on a daily basis on TikTok. Shocking, right? Amazing to think that roughly 90 minutes of our day, on average, are going to TikTok consumption. So this is not a, a fly-by-night platform. Uh, this is not a platform where people are you know, appearing and disappearing quickly. They are sinking in. This is a captive audience, right? In fact, more than 20% of users, this is all TikTok research, by the way, more than 20% of users are claiming that TikTok is a more entertaining platform than the other services they might subscribe to or that they might uh, consume for free, right? And that might include Netflix. It might include any streaming platform for that matter. And then, of course, all the, all the platforms that we might use for free that we might also consider social media platforms. And then 30% of TikTok users say they spend less time now watching television, watching streaming services, or using other video services since becoming a TikTok user. So what does that tell you? That tells you that TikTok is siphoning away in huge numbers a ton of users every day. And when they're coming, they are staying. So this is the, this is the chart that shows you just how uh, impressive a t amount of time people are spending on TikTok. 95 minutes per day on average are being spent in app by users in the US. This data is from Center Tower. And in a distant second place, uh, but still well over an hour, uh, we're spending 74 minutes on YouTube, which of course remains a highly popular platform naturally. But really, if you think about it, we're spending a movie's worth of time on, on TikTok, right? And then you've got Instagram and Facebook, which are in just about a, a, you know, a tie because, frankly, those two platforms are merging as it is. So much of Facebook has become Instagram, uh, and Instagram is really trying to peel away from, from the pack as uh, an attractive platform for all demographics. And then you have in distant fourth and distant, uh, excuse me, distant fifth and distant sixth places, Twitter at 29 minutes per day, 
and Snapchat at 21 minutes per day. Uh, and just to give Snapchat a quick moment uh, of commentary here, you know, it is a very popular platform. Many, many tens of millions of users across uh, the, the country in the US using this platform, but it's really at its core a messaging tool more so than an entertainment platform. So let's dig in now back into TikTok and talk about how all this time spent, all of us, right? We're probably all doing it, is translating into ad revenue for the platform. This is a really, uh, this is really recent data from uh, eMarketer talking about ad revenues across the, the many social media platforms that of course we all advertise on as marketers. Well, no, no surprise here, Instagram and Facebook, otherwise known as Meta, is the 800 pound gorilla in the room, right? Nearly $50 billion is being spent on, uh, on advertising on those two platforms in the US alone. So clearly, uh, you know, the champion of this chart. Second place, you've got YouTube. At a distant third place, $8 billion is being spent on video ads on YouTube. And then here you've got sort of this upstart TikTok at, at only $6 billion this year being spent uh, on the platform. And while that may seem like a small number, and I'll move your eyes over to the right side of the chart now, that $5.96 billion in 2022, it's going to jump year over year. It's going to jump 47% next year. It's then projected to jump another 26% the year after that. So it's going to be in a couple of, well, breaths, really, 11, 11, an $11 billion uh, ad revenue platform, right? So truly remarkable in its leaps and bounds. And frankly, by the time it is uh, an $11 billion platform in terms of ad revenue, it will have far overtaken uh, YouTube as, as a platform for ad spending. And it will have easily taken over Twitter, Snapchat, and Pinterest combined. So TikTok is really eating just about everybody's lunch on the social media landscape. Uh, and this ad revenue, of course, these numbers are revised quarterly. So while it may be 8.75 next year and 11 billion in 2024, uh, the news that we're seeing here is certainly indicating that it's going to be even a larger portion of ad spend is going to be pulled away from those other platforms, the likes of YouTube, the likes of uh, Facebook and Instagram, and moved over to, to TikTok. So stay, tu stay tuned on this front. Uh, and not only is TikTok eating the lunch of the social media world, it's actually eating the lunch of the whole sort of entertainment streaming uh, media world. Let me talk through these bullets here quickly and just impress upon you the notion of how quickly and how nimbly TikTok is moving into dramatically new spaces, right? So we know that, of course, they're fighting Facebook with their breezy ads manager. I'm going to walk you through that in a minute. And their massive audience growth. People are putting down the Facebook app and they're picking up the TikTok app in massive droves, right? And on the, on the paid front, right, from the creator standpoint, there is incentive to move over to TikTok and start posting uh, what are called reels on Instagram and posting TikToks on TikTok instead, because actually TikTok is making creators a little richer with their 50-50 ad revenue uh, uh, share for creators compared to uh, Instagram's rev share, which is a 45-55 split. So by virtue of creating a platform for yourself or for your business on uh, TikTok, you are getting a larger share of that of that revenue than you would with other platforms, which of course is, is an appealing value proposition for any creator. And then TikTok is also you know, nipping at, at uh, YouTube's heels here with this hashtag TikTok taught me. I'm sure you all remember a year or so ago, uh, TikTok made me buy it. And that was sort of the e-commerce play for TikTok. Now it is making a play into the more tutorial or educational realm. Uh, and they've had a massive ad campaign themselves to promote this hashtag where people are using TikTok not only to uh, you know, entertain themselves, they're using it to learn new skills, learn new uh, trades, uh, learn new, just new information and new knowledge across the board. So this hashtag is really an outward sign of all the ways we used to go to YouTube to learn how to, I don't know, fix a leaky faucet maybe. And now we're learning how to do that on TikTok, right? So it's become really, in, in the younger demographic, it's become uh, not just a, an editorial, or sorry, an educational platform, it's become a search engine and it's become a recommendation engine and it's become a news source, right? So it's really becoming a little bit of everything to the younger demographic in particular. And then interestingly, and maybe counterintuitively, TikTok is also going after Netflix. And how you might wonder that's possible, well, you now know we're spending 95 minutes per day on the platform already, 
So why not watch a, a movie on TikTok versus a movie on Netflix? And they're making these changes not only by posting uh, or encouraging the posting of much more compelling content, they're also lengthening um, their videos, right? So it used to be on TikTok, you would be able to share a video of several seconds, a minute. Then they uh, updated it to three minutes, making it uh, a, you know, a much more uh, uh, rich experience for viewers. Well, now uh, TikTok is making 10 minute videos available to, to viewers and to creators. And this is not just because we're spending more time on the platform. This is truly because of monetization, right? It is much easier to monetize a 10 minute video than it is to monetize a three minute video. What do I mean by that? Well, as a viewer on TikTok, you're imagine scrolling through your feed and you see um, an ad at the midpoint of a three minute video. Well, that's frustrating. I don't wanna watch an ad after 90 seconds of, of the story that started. But if you get a mid-roll ad on a 10 minute video, you're gonna be a heck of a lot more tolerant in watching that video than you would have if it appeared in your feed after, oh, say 60 or 90 seconds. So with these 10 minute videos, it's much, it's much easier to inlay advertising uh, than it is on, on short form videos. And Marketing Dive, interestingly, last point on Netflix, Marketing Dive just reported a few days ago that TikTok has overtaken Netflix as the second most popular app for people under 35. So if there's any mystery left around who TikTok is going after, let that mystery be dispelled. And here you have it, right? Uh, TikTok is going after all these platforms and more. So there's certainly more to come than are on this slide, but these are the ones where it's really made, TikTok has really made massive inroads on, uh, on the entertainment front. So let's dig in now and, and shift gears a little bit and talk more about advertising now that we've sort of laid the foundation around uh, uh, TikTok fundamentals. And let me just describe for you what the ads manager looks like. So here you are, you, maybe you're new to TikTok advertising, maybe you've done this a long time, you're just looking to get better. Uh, this lays out for you in, in just quick four quick uh, uh, visuals what's involved in the ads manager. If you've not dug in, by the way, if you've not actually created an account on uh, the TikTok ads manager and, and played around, I highly recommend it. It is a much more pleasant experience than you would find on other um, social media uh, backends in terms of you know campaign creation, um, or posting and reporting. So to start at the top left, you've got your dashboard, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's sort of your hub for everything campaign related, right? Because you've got metrics, you've got uh, campaigns, you've got um, an overview of your performance. And then moving over to the assets section, this is where things get interesting. This is where you're actually managing events, right? Pixels uh, that you place on apps, that you place on web uh, websites for um, reporting. This is where you host all of your creatives, all your videos, all your draft, all your all of your drafts. And this is also where you're going to be uh, hosting all of your audiences, right? And we're going to talk more about audiences in a few moments. Um, so this is really where you can pull. It's basically a, a you know a, a database, a repository, if you will of being able to pull assets uh, as needed. And this of course includes music as well. And we'll talk more about how, uh, how that's leveraged uh, in the coming slides. Bottom left, you've got your campaign section, which of course is exactly what it sounds like. It's where you manage all of your ad groups, all of your ads, all of your campaigns. And in case you aren't sure or, or, or were wondering where the, the minimum is today, uh, TikTok does require a minimum spend of $50 per day. So if you're not able to spend at least 50 bucks on your campaign per day, then uh, you'll have to look elsewhere. Uh, but frankly, $50 is not all that hard to accomplish, uh, especially with the way um, TikTok is, uh, is hungry for your ad dollars, right? Uh, and of course, day parting is available. So if you have a particular uh, type of business, let's say you're running a franchise of breakfast restaurants and you want your ads to only appear between you know, 6 a.m. And, and 11 a.m., well, that's certainly available to you, right? Or if you have, uh, you know, a, a, a franchise of movie theaters. You might want to run ads on uh, in the evening, on weekends, to get people to come to the theater last minute, right? And then the last uh, section here on the ads manager is the reporting console. And this is probably the most impressive part of the entire TikTok ad platform. I can't, I don't think I can count the number of different metrics uh, that are available to you as a marketer in the reporting section. Uh, and they're all digital metrics, by the way. And we're going to talk about uh, foot traffic here in a few minutes. But going into the reporting section of the TikTok Ads Manager, you can measure just about every single action and slice every single outcome, however you'd like, using custom reports. Of course, you can build your own. And then there are also a number of templated reports 
uh, that allow you to, to um, just consume uh, insights into your campaigns out of the box without any real work uh, up front. So in a nutshell, that is the TikTok Ads Manager. It's made up of four parts. It's very straightforward. Uh, again, I encourage you to, to create an account, dig in, and start to play around and figure out how to make the most of this platform, which I'm now going to unpack for you in the content and creative section of today's webinar. So this is where we really get uh, not just broad, but also deep uh, into, into how to maximize uh, your creative on TikTok and also maximize your results. So the first thing I want you to know is that TikTok is, again, hungry for ad dollars. You can see here that 20% of the average Facebook feed is ads. 20% of the average Instagram feed is ads. 20% of the average LinkedIn feed is ads. These are all platforms that have been saturated with advertising. So imagine you're scrolling on Instagram, every fourth or fifth post is gonna be a sponsored or paid promotion, right? All the way over to the right, only two and a half percent of the average TikTok feed is ads. So this is actually one of the reasons why we spend so much time on it because we're not, we're not um, uh, full of ads in our feed, right? But that's gonna change, right? That 2.4% is gonna grow as more advertisers adopt the platform and that number's only gonna go up. But the good news for you is at this moment, it is the right time to get your toe into the water uh, at TikTok because there are so few ads per user feed that you're really gonna make probably uh, the most impactful uh, uh, impression that you can at this moment, given, given that mix. What's also really important to note here is that consumers are discovering new products and new services on social media. It is the new method for discovering products you didn't even know you wanted or didn't even know you needed, right? And actually, ironically, this is a Facebook survey, 75% of consumers are using social to discover new needs. And of course, it's the holiday season, so that's only gonna go up, I'm sure. We're not using Google, we're not using televised advertising, we're not using radio, we're not using direct mail, we're using social media, not just TikTok, all of them, to discover new, new products. And that differs, by the way, from Googling coffee near me or you know uh, burritos near me, because we're not discovering new needs on Google when we search coffee near me, we're solving a problem, right? We're telling, we're asking Google, show me the nearest coffee because I'm not quite awake yet, so fix that problem for me. This is about discovery, and TikTok has actually made huge um, gains in this, in this regard. So you can see here that 15% of all product discoveries today are happening on TikTok. Now this is data, straight from TikTok, so you've got to, you know, take it with that with that, um, that idea in your head. But they're really playing an increasingly critical role in that first touch discovery of products, of course, you didn't know you needed, right? So a couple of, a couple of what, months or maybe a year and a half ago, this number was at 4% of all product discovery. Uh, fast forward to early 2022, we're at about 8%. And here we are now into July and the end of 2022, and we're at 15%. So imagine that, 15% of all product discoveries happening on TikTok. It's fairly, it's actually quite remarkable to think um, that what you didn't have yesterday is now in your hands today because you were scrolling on your TikTok feed last night, right? Pretty amazing. So not only is it about product discovery, this is also about customer acquisition. So not only are customers discovering things they didn't know they wanted, they are buying these things, right? So this is where your ads are gonna make the most impact uh, by having clearly uh, the most authentic um, and, and fun creative you can post, and we'll get into that in a moment. The other thing about TikTok is that it's adding horsepower to your other ad channels. So again, more research from TikTok from our, uh, late last year. Uh, they asked people on TikTok, hey, when you see a, a TV ad after watching a TikTok ad, how much, more likely are you to remember um, that, that ad you saw on TV? And the answer was 13%. So TikTok essentially does some pre-encoding in the mind of the consumer, and then it's reinforced when that consumer sees that ad on television. So it's basically, obviously, an, an omni-channel approach here, but this notion of TikTok making something memorable for you is quite impactful when you come across it on a channel, an ad channel, that is, that you may have been consuming you know, all your life. Another interesting point is that watching Instagram influencers content is 43% memorable for TikTok users if you've already seen that content on TikTok. So clearly, uh, this is a TikTok uh, sort of nod at, at wanting to overtake Instagram, 
Well, what they're saying here is that if you've seen something on TikTok and then you see it yet again on Instagram, that Instagram ad, that sponsored post, is going to make a 43% more imp- uh, a more memorable impression than if you had not primed your audience with that content on TikTok. And then lastly, in terms of skipping ads, you are 31% less likely to skip through a YouTube ad if you first watch content from that creator uh, for the same product on TikTok. So it's interesting to know that if we see something on TikTok from a creator, uh, we're more likely to see what that creator has to say on other platforms, naturally, um, because you know what? It might be something new and the brain, the human brain is galvanized by novelty. So uh, clearly, not only is TikTok its own a source of horsepower, it is adding that muscle to other platforms where you might be spending ad dollars today as well. So let's talk about now what it takes to jump into the TikTok fray and begin posting both organically and from a paid standpoint. And the outcome here, the desired outcome here is earned traffic, earned media, earned attention, right? So that's the big red circle on the outside. So let me start in the middle, the very heart of this with organic content and talk through this for a moment. First thing you should understand about TikTok is that it rewards authenticity, right? This is not your father's Instagram. This is about being raw. This is about being human. This is about being unedited. This is about being effectively genuine, right? What those things do, of course, what those actions do when you're creative is they build trust with your audience, right? And they they instill a sense of confidence that you're doing it right. Because TikTok has its own language. It has its own uh, vibe, I guess, to use the right word. Um, so there you go. It's, it's that notion of showing up authentically. And then once you post consistently, uh, organically on the TikTok platform from your brand or as an agency on behalf of the brands you're advertising for, you get to learn by virtue of comments, by virtue of likes, by virtue of shares, figuring out what content resonates most effectively with consumers. This is why you see on TikTok people pinning videos to the top of their profile page because those are the posts that have had the most impact on that creator's audience, right? And you will do the same thing. You will have posts that are massively popular and you will have posts that fall flat. It's the nature of the business. So the idea here is to post as much as you can and then test and scale what works, right? So keep going with that creativity, keep going with that authenticity and know that you're gonna have some wins and you're gonna have some loses, but, but keep going and keep posting organically. From that organic batch, you can move into a paid posture, right? This is where you take the content that's worked most effectively on the organic side, and you're putting money behind it. This is about what we used to call boosting on other platforms, amplifying top performing content. And actually TikTok just released a feature that allows you to do this, do this much more easily, which we'll talk through in a moment. And by virtue of paying for access to new audiences, you're expanding your reach, right? So this is the key, knowing what works with your audience organically and then amplifying that content with dollars. and Thereby, you can unlock even greater insights into what's working because that paid audience is not exactly alike, but similar to that organic audience. So what you have now is a much more diverse range of insights into content that works. And by virtue of these two things working in concert with each other, organic and paid, you're going to maximize your earned potential. The more you post, the more you amplify that top performing content with dollars, the more you are earning your audience and building a community, right? So this is where the notion of marketer and creator sort of come together. On TikTok, you are thinking like a marketer with organic, paid, and earned media, like we all do, but you're acting like a creator. You're acting like one of the pack, right? Which is somewhat ironic, but it is truly the name of the game. So as you think about your own strategy, Begin with that white circle in the middle, organic, no need to go full bore on paid yet, but it should happen relatively quickly. Within a few weeks, you should have meaningful insights on how to maximize that organic content that's performing so well and backing it up with paid, you know, with a, with a paid play. So that's a framework for thinking about the, you know, getting your content out onto TikTok. What I've got here for you now is a maturity model. This is going to put you somewhere on this continuum as basically a starting out sort of brand, getting your feet wet on TikTok, all the way into sort of the flow on the far right, where you've got this engine, this machine of making TikToks. So let's step through these in in, in turn, starting with the left, um, with the, the repurposing of assets. So this is where you're making content, right? Today you're making content for YouTube, you're making content for Instagram, you're making content for Facebook, you're, you're just sort of posting video wherever it may be. 
Uh, and this is a great way to start. So there's no wrong way or wrong time to start on TikTok. Today is that day. So by virtue of having these assets already in hand, you're basically re-editing them and you're making them usable, if you will, on TikTok. The nice thing here is that it doesn't take that much effort and it takes very little cost to do that because you've got these creatives in your pocket. The downside to this, of course, is that you're not creating content for TikTok, you're repurposing content from some other platform and making it sort of fit on, on TikTok. And you're not also leveraging the creators platforms that are so prevalent on TikTok today. Um, so you're really kind of in this on your own. You're almost an army of one in this white box. Uh, but there are tools, you know, there are tools to get started and it's a great way to go because it's again, again lowest barrier to entry. Uh, smart video, the TikTok video editor, uh, the commercial music library where you can grab all the audio you want that is um, that is unlicensed or pre-licensed for you. Um, and it's an all you can eat buffet. So this is the way to think about jumping on trends on TikTok, where of course, you know, your video will show up in as many users feeds as possible by virtue of you capitalizing on current audio trends um, from the commercial music library. The second step, after you've kind of gotten your feet wet and you're, you're, you're off the ground, if you will, you know, you're climbing here, uh, this is where you start to work with creators. And the word creators, by the way, I'm using interchangeably with the word influencers. So if you're more familiar with influencers or affiliate marketing, uh, all of those things are effectively the same thing here in this, in this context. The benefit here in this blue box is that you're growing your presence on TikTok in the right way. This is where you begin to work collaboratively with creators and use their audience and their platform to grow your own, right? The, the, the uh, positive, the upside here is that you're becoming more of a native player to the platform, right? Your content is becoming much more TikTok centric. You're using other creators to amplify your message, uh, which is a really smart way to grow that community. The downside, of course, is that you're relinquishing some control, right? And as a brand, we've all become used to this. This is just the name of the game. We've all gotten used to relinquishing some amount of control but now even more so. And while that may feel scary on the surface, the good news here is that you're doing it the right way because these are creators once chosen, you know, once you've selected who you wanna work with, you're engaging with people who are only going to bring um, goodwill and trust to your brand. So have confidence that once you've made that decision to work with creators, uh, you're going about it the right way. And of course, you uh, have some uh, options available to you here. Spark ads are the uh, the feature I mentioned a few minutes ago that effectively allows you to boost organic posts, as we may think about it on, on other platforms, and naturally the TikTok Creator Marketplace, which is a place for you to go and find creators who have an affinity or an alignment with, with your own brands or your own products. Now, once you're at that stage, you're kind of, you're really at cruising altitude, right? Uh, you're you're using the right tools. You're you're engaging with the right audiences. You're growing your you're growing your community. So now we want to get into the flow and make a regular cadence here of TikToks, uh, frankly, as often as you can. And this is where you're you're either in house or through an agency empowering teams of creatives and and producers to make TikToks for your channel uh, or channels uh, regularly, right? Daily, weekly. Now the benefit here is that you have true authenticity because you've you've discovered your voice, you've evolved your voice, and you've refined your voice through testing and learning. Right now, the downside here is this takes time. Right, there is a learning curve as you might think about it. But once once you're at that cruising altitude and you've reached the point of making TikToks with uh, a team behind those creatives, you are truly boundless at that point. Um, and this is where you're really uh, leveling up your, your use of the platform through licensing your own music and, of course, engaging more deeply with the uh, TikTok Creator Marketplace and running experiments, not just with creative, but the different types of creators you might want to partner with. So wherever you find yourself on this continuum, it is the right time to start. On the far left, you're simply making content and repurposing it. On the far right, you are making TikToks and you are, you know, one of the greats on this platform. So with all these different uh, evolutions of the platform, there's been a, a massive advertiser response to the opportunity that TikTok is presenting to us. So the first thing I wanna lay out for you here is that the algorithm on TikTok is markedly different from the algorithm on all of the platforms. First and foremost, uh, although that is changing, I will, I will tell you that uh, Facebook and Instagram are becoming much more TikTok-like 
in terms of feeding you content they believe you will like uh, by virtue of your past behavior instead of only content that you are following or that you have liked in the past, right? So point here is that the For You algorithm on TikTok is feeding content to you based on your specific interests. So your content on TikTok could show up in front of anybody. They don't need to follow you. They don't need to like you. They may have never even heard of you, right? But by virtue of you using the right audio track or you, you're using the right hashtags, you are going to show up likely in that user's feed because you're capitalizing on the right trend at the right time. And this is allowing a lot of uh, advertisers on TikTok to circumvent um, Apple's app tracking transparency hurdle that is cotton, you know, sort of hobbled in some ways, other platforms in terms of reach and in terms of performance. Uh, the other thing that TikTok has done recently is they've released a new feature called Smart Performance Campaigns, which effectively allows you to test and experiment in an automated fashion. So this is making A-B testing effectively a lot more accessible to small businesses and small brands and allowing them to come into the platform along with the Walmarts, along with the McDonald's, along with the Amazons of the world, because hey, everybody's got ad spend, big and small, right? So this smart performance campaign feature is a good thing to look at if you're thinking about getting started on uh, running uh, sponsored uh, posts on TikTok and testing to see what works. Of course, I already shared this next bullet with you. A lot of dollars are being pulled out of Facebook and being pulled out of Instagram and other channels. Of course, they're still worth tens of billions in ad spend, but some of those dollars are moving over to TikTok. And the great news is, is that TikTok is super measurable, as measurable as those other platforms. And we'll get into that here in a few moments. Um, and then the really sophisticated among us on the agency side and on the brand side are actually standing up teams, internal teams of TikTok creative of TikTok creators, if you will. So at some of the uh, most progressive agencies in the country, you've got now studios of talent, studios of equipment, studios of, of, of creative that are producing TikToks on a regular basis. And if you're super turbocharged, you're actually putting together your own music and starting trends yourself uh, on these platforms. Now, these are some of the biggest and most progressive agencies uh, in the US. But I would imagine that you know, what starts at the highest echelon of, of advertising often finds its way down uh, at the SMB, at the SMB level. So you're gonna find a lot of other agencies that are not among the largest in the world who are making these same kind of moves. Uh, and in fact, if you're a brand, I would encourage you to engage with your agency to think about these kinds of things. At the core of all this though, is not just posting willy nilly and trying to figure out, you know, hoping what works is, is what you think is funniest or most entertaining. It is about hardcore measuring uh, and hardcore testing. So TikTok wants to make this available to you in spades, and I'll talk through all the different ways you can measure on TikTok here very shortly. But as you begin your journey, or as you continue your journey on TikTok, make sure you're thinking about how you're going to test, what you're testing for, um, and getting those results uh, that you're expecting, especially when it comes to offline foot traffic. Um, and the, nothing more critical than actual uh, store visits if you're advertising on behalf of brick and mortar. Uh, so here's some best practices around making TikToks. This comes straight from their most recent uh, uh, TikTok playbook. It was actually released just a few weeks ago. And what's interesting about TikTok is that it has trained us to watch videos vertically, right? We're all used to uh, computer screens. We're all used to iPads. We're all used to even TV screens in some cases. And those are horizontal screens. We're watching those left to right. TikTok is training us to watch up and down, right? So the first thing you wanna do with your TikTok is make sure you are framing your creative vertically, right? Uh, anything that's horizontal is on other platforms, anything that's vertical is on TikTok. The other thing you wanna do, of course, is leverage the power of sound. We've talked about trends, we've talked about this being an audio platform. Don't underestimate the relevance of your audio track. Uh, your text on screen, you've all seen this in TikToks that you watched on your own. Uh, you want to make sure that the text you've got is is um, quick, is insightful, is substantive, uh, and and makes a difference, right? You're not looking for throwaway throwaway copy. Uh, and the other thing on on TikTok is that if you've got something to sell or you got something to promote, make sure you're out there with it as quickly as possible. What you don't want to do is build resentment in the mind of your audience, give them you know a good many seconds or minutes of entertainment, and then ultimately try to pitch them something. Get out there quickly with the fact that you've got a, a message to share uh, from, a, from a, a, a promotional standpoint. And of course, along those same lines, 
include your CTA on screen from the jump, right? If you include a CTA after your video has run, you're far less likely to get a result than if you include that from the beginning. Uh, number six, there is no fourth wall. This is a notion that was born in live theater where um, you know a stage is walled in on three sides and the fourth side is the audience. Well, breaking the fourth wall means interacting with your audience, right? Moving into that space and crossing over that threshold and being authentic, being genuine, being raw, right? That's really important in terms of not having that notion of artifice or that notion of, of superficiality. You wanna absolutely do away with that. Be entertaining, be real, right? We've talked through authenticity, we've talked through genuineness, and of course, the latest trends. This is a, a massive tip. Make sure that as you post, you're not posting ignorant of all the latest trends that are happening on TikTok, because guess what? If you capitalize on those, your video is much more likely to be viewed than if you are writing some trend that was even a week old, right? And then the last tip that TikTok has for you is that once you're ready, let creators take the lead on your content. So again, this is about relinquishing control, it's about trust, but it's also about results. So TikTok has a massive, massive platform for creators to, to build on, and the suggestion here is to, of course, make use of that. So I've taken a couple of those on that previous slide, and I'm now gonna share with you some real metrics, some real results in terms of what's happened, uh, what's happened to campaigns when these decisions were made. So the first tip here is qual about quality and about um, high resolution. So videos posted on TikTok at 720 pixels or better saw a better than 300% lift in conversions compared to lower res videos. So while authenticity might sound like graininess or poor quality to you, people still do want that visual crispness to the video experience. Um, so you're gonna wanna shoot in 720p or better. The other tip here is about resolution. So vertical videos shot in nine, uh, nine by 16 aspect ratio saw a 91% better lift in conversion compared to videos that did not match the screen format. So this is a, a, a note of caution to folks who are looking to repurpose content from other platforms and just simply pushing it into TikTok. Those videos will not be horrible. Obviously you made them, they're great, but if they're not purpose built, for TikTok, they're not going to enjoy as high a conversion rate as videos that are made natively uh, for the platform. And then you can see here around your call to action, you wanna make sure that that is upfront in the face of the, the viewer right from the, the, the get-go. And that will, in, in this case, give you a 152% better lift in conversion compared to videos that are not, that are muddy, right? They're not quite clear to the audience as to what, the, what action they should take next. So don't be shy, don't be coy, get your call to action out really from the first frame. And then interestingly, while TikTok is lengthening the limit on videos, um, they're actually uh, showing here the videos between 21 and 34 seconds are the length people want the most, right? And those are the ones that are seeing a 280% lift in conversions compared to videos that are shorter than that, or even, of course, much longer than that. And your average video, I'm sure, is much longer than 34 seconds. But if you're looking to get in it, get in quickly and get out quickly, um, you wanna fall somewhere between 21 and 34 seconds. So by all means, there are variations on these themes. You're going to find truth outside of these norms, naturally, as you experiment. But as a best practice, uh, from our friends uh, at VidMob, you're gonna see a lot, of, a lot of results here if you stay within these guidelines. Okay. That is all about content creation, content optimization. Let's talk about now measuring stuff. And I wanna end, we're coming up on half a quarter till the hour. I wanna end the webinar with a campaign example. So let's begin with all the different ways you can measure performance on TikTok. And I wanna start on the left-hand side of the screen here under that pink box. So in-platform metrics are, well, frankly, there's too many to list. And I had to pick and choose uh, for the sake of this slide, what I could fit. But there are many, many dozens, if not hundreds of metrics you can choose um, on the TikTok platform natively to see how your uh, videos and your, your audio-based uh, uh, videos are performing. So everything from the tried and true impressions and clicks and click-through rate and reach, all the way down to likes and shares, how far through the video did people get, um, how long did it take people to watch your video, uh, how many people, comments, all of it. You, you name the metric uh, on, on TikTok as a digital outcome, 
you can measure it. So that's great if you want to live only inside of TikTok and know only how your campaign did inside the platform, which frankly is useful to marketers, but it's not super useful to the rest of the business. People might not want to know what your conversion rate on, on TikTok was. They want to know business results, right? And that's what the rest of this slide is about. So if you want to measure conversions on a website with people moving through an e-commerce experience, you're going to want to go one of two ways. Um, you can use UTM tags, which of course you can push into Google Campaign Manager, and you can use the TikTok pixel to put, of course, in app uh, or on the web in this case, uh, to measure um, off TikTok platform actions, right? The second thing, of course, is measuring conversions in app. And there are a number of mobile measurement partners that TikTok works, works with that allow you to measure the impact of your TikToks on in-app behavior, whether that's a download or an activation or an account creation <clears throat> or a purchase or an upsell or a cross-sell or you name it, right? Any of these partners can, can, can work uh, on these campaigns with you. Uh, and so those are all really great digital behaviors. But as I've talked about since the beginning of this webinar, many of you are advertising for brick and mortar locations, brick and mortar uh, businesses. So how do you measure conversions in store? Well, there's really two ways to do it. Um, one is the, frankly, the quick and easy way, and one is the hard, expensive way. Um, the quick and easy term here is reveal mobile. So the fact of the matter is you wanna measure campaign performance on store traffic, on restaurant visits, on movie theater uh, uh, visits, on auto dealership, right, test drives, you name it. This is the platform, Reveal Mobile, that's going to allow you to do that. And the campaign example I have for you here is gonna walk you through how to do this exactly step, uh, step by step. The other option is Foursquare. Perhaps you've heard of them. Uh, they are uh, a, a bespoke service uh, with the ability to measure uh, offline behavior from your campaign, but this is really only available uh, to some of the largest brands with very, very deep pockets. So if you're looking to get started on measuring in-store conversions from your TikTok, um, Foursquare may be off limits to you, Reveal Mobile would certainly be that path forward. So the next few slides I have for you are around using um, TikTok to drive in-store foot traffic. So here's your campaign example. We're going to feature a great brand, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, um, where of course you've probably been in the past to get yourself uh, an orange slushy or maybe a nice uh, lemongrass, you know, refreshing drink, whatever your favorite is, Tropical Smoothie Cafe has it, no doubt. But this campaign is gonna walk you through more than just drinks. So this is about Tropical Smoothie Cafe needing more foot traffic uh, by selling more things than just drinks, right? So we can see here using our foot traffic analytics uh, that we have here at Reveal Mobile, what's happening at Tropical Smoothie Cafe stores across the country. 576 locations across the entire system, their foot traffic is down 2% month over month. You can also see here that 63% of their customers are visiting more than once, which is great. Uh, you wanna have a lot of repeat visits, but the lifeblood of the business is new customer acquisition. So if only 37% of your total visits are from new visitors, you definitely wanna rebalance that mix and get closer to something of a 50-50 or even a 60-40 new compared to return visitors. So we need to boost our proportion of new customers. Uh, we can also see here in the middle that a lot of people who are visiting Tropical Smoothie Cafe are coming from further than five miles out. So they are dedicated consumers, right? They're making a special trip to come to your store to get the, locate, or to get the, the, the treat that they're looking to get. So to execute this campaign, we are going to use the strategy of geofencing, and we're going to accomplish two goals. We're going to retain our current customers, which of course, Planet Smoothie, uh, Tropical Smoothie Cafe does not want to lose. And we're also going to acquire new customers by, uh, by stealing share from the competition. I don't know how to say it nicely. So the first thing we're going to do here for this campaign is we're going to geofence our own stores, our own Tropical Smoothie Cafes, and we're going to um, acquire all those mobile ad IDs that have visited those locations. And that's to retain our current audience, right? And then we're gonna remarket to those folks. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna geofence all the Jamba Juices, we're gonna geofence all the Planet Smoothies, and we're gonna geofence all the Orange Juliuses. Because guess what? All those people also love smoothies, they're just going to the wrong store. So by virtue of advertising Tropical Smoothie Cafe to the Jamba Juice visitors, the Planet Smoothie visitors, the Orange Julius visitors, we are going to grow our share of the market for Tropical Smoothie Cafe. So imagine we have put those geofences in place around those locations and we look back, let's say a week, seven days, and we say, okay, 
give me all the mobile ad IDs that have visited these locations. And you can see here, we ran an experiment. We got 250,019 privacy compliant opted in mobile ad IDs from visitors to these locations. And then, so now we have an audience of a quarter of a million people we can market Tropical Smoothie Cafe to. And we need to do that on TikTok. So we're gonna push that audience into TikTok and we're gonna find all of those mobile ad IDs with accounts on TikTok. And we're gonna match those two things together. And of course, we have here a 54% match rate, you can see, which gives us a final addressable audience of 135,010 people who we can market Tropical Smoothie Cafe to. So this is a terrific in-market audience that we can uh, message Tropical Smoothie Cafe to because we know they already love Tropical Smoothie Cafe. They're just, again, going to the wrong store. And to do that matching process, this is the audience builder in TikTok. A quick one, two, three visual for you here. So again, this is in the assets section of the TikTok ads manager. This is where you'll build any number of audiences from TikTok's existing uh, filters to custom audiences of your own, which is what we're working with here. So step two is simply uploading a customer file. This is where you select a customer file. And you can see in step three, they're already asking for, uh, in the case of Apple, IDFAs, which is um, the Apple ID for advertising, and the GA ID, which is the Google advertising ID. So these are the mobile ad IDs you're gonna push into the platform and get your 154,000 addressable audience members who are already shopping, frankly, for Tropical Smoothie Cafe, and you wanna acquire them for your own purposes. Here's our creative. So we have here a creator, or in other terms, an influencer, uh, Cody Ryan, a good base uh, follower uh, uh, follower base of about 350,000 people. And more importantly, out of those 350,000 people, he has 20 million likes across all of her, all of her uh, videos. So in this, in this creator content, we're not only featuring a Tropical Smoothie Cafe drink, which of course everybody knows exists, but did you know Tropical Smoothie Ca Cafe also has delicious quesadillas well cody has just told you that right so she is posting her own content to her own audience of course hashtagging with the right hashtags add calling out tropical smoothie with their own account and enjoying making the food the star of this ad uh for tropical smoothie cafe so by virtue of not only promoting um the smoothies and the drinks that tropical smoothie cafe has to jamba juice and to orange julius and all the others you can now get lunch at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, which is a great way to increase not only awareness around your products, but customer acquisition. So this is a great example of using a, a creator on the platform to amplify and reach new audiences for the sake of your products. Now, measurement, we're not there yet, right? So we've got the creative, we've got the audience. What happened as a result of this ad? Using the same geofencing platform here at Reveal Mobile, we can see exactly what happened as a result of this campaign. The same audience we loaded into TikTok has now taken the following actions. 15% increase in foot traffic to our locations. 57,259 people from that audience have visited a, a, a Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Um, and we know that because they actually come from the exact same audience that we loaded into TikTok as our custom audience, right? You can see the number of targeted devices there on the right. 135,010 um, from 91 different 91,000 different households, so more than one device per household, uh, and others are number of locations, 576. So with 57,000 and change visiting the the stores, we simply multiply that number of visits by a dollar value, and we know the average ticket at, at Tropical Smoothie Cafe with uh, quesadilla is $15. Hence, we've just now made $858,000 in top line sales from TikTok ads at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. So this is a great way to tie together uh, your digital ad spend on TikTok and your offline results in store, whatever store you might market for with real top line sales estimates. So all that to say, it is possible to tie together your paid social campaigns on TikTok to offline foot traffic, frankly, as simple as this, simply through custom audiences. So getting started. The help center is a great place to go, right? Ads.tiktok.com backslash help. It has all of the tools you might need to get going. You can uh, search for the most popular ads. You can find uh, uh, music to build into your creative. Um, it gives you best practices. It gives you troubleshooting tips. Any kind of campaign you have on your mind, this is probably your first, uh, your best bet is to jump into the, into the help center for TikTok. 
Uh, and so with that, let me go ahead and uh, entertain some questions. This is a great time for you to ask away whatever's on your mind, and we will not have time to get to all of these. I apologize. I know we went through a ton of content here, uh, but let me go ahead and jump into the queue and see what is in uh, on people's minds. Uh, the first question here, do you feel there's any overlap forming between TikTok and Instagram due to Instagram's emphasis on Reels? The short answer is yes, there is absolutely overlap. But the fact of the matter is TikTok continues to differentiate itself on behalf of how they pay creators in the rev share I talked about and in terms of um, video format. So Instagram, if you recall, uh, it was born out of the notion of polish and um, mystique and almost perfection, right? You know, the, the, the views of the beach and the drink uh, by the pool, right? These were, these were heightened experiences people were demonstrating on, on, on um, Instagram. Well, TikTok is not that. TikTok is not polished. TikTok is not mystique. TikTok is real. TikTok is authentic. TikTok is raw, right? So while there is overlap in terms of format, underneath that top layer of just presentation, you've got massive amounts of nuance between the two platforms. Um, but also, the last thing I would tell you is that if you've got Reels content that you want to repurpose for TikTok, it's a great way to get started. Um, how do you get ahead of trends before they take off and go viral? And how do you know what music or trend is about to take off? Man, if I had the answer to that, I would win the $1.5 billion lottery tonight or whenever the next drawing is. But in a, in a more serious uh, vein, I will tell you that uh, the Help Center is a great way to get a feel for the top performing ads. So trends can last anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. So the key here is, um, not spending a month on a creative campaign uh, to get that to get that trend um, wind into your sales. The key is to create a, a campaign on TikTok in a matter of days, right? You've got to be quick. You've got to be authentic. You've got to be unpolished. And thank goodness, because you only have a couple of days to do it, right? So the best way to get ahead of that is to view on TikTok what other people are watching in terms of popularity and get into that same mode, right? Ride that wave. Uh, time spent uh, time spent stats were from Android. How does iOS compare? That's a great question. I apologize. I didn't have iOS data for time spent. Um, in the US, about 60% of all uh, mobile data comes from ad Android devices. About 40% comes from iOS devices. So I imagine there's some degree of parity uh, uh, between platforms, but the majority of that data, yes, was from Android. I apologize. Uh, yes, absolutely. We will share the presentation deck. We will share the recording. Uh, and we will share more answers to more questions as they occur to you. Uh, let's see. Um, I saw the percent increase of ad revenue slowing between 2022 and 2023 in that chart where we were talking about ad spend. Um, are there any expectations that TikTok may plateau around 2024 or after, or is it too soon to tell? Man, I'll tell you, I really need to buy that lottery ticket. But I will tell you also that if TikTok continues on the, um, the path it's been on, it is innovating at a much more rapid pace than we've seen its predecessors innovate. Facebook has taken its time to innovate. Instagram has taken its time to innovate. YouTube has taken its time to innovate. TikTok is nimble. TikTok is agile. TikTok has massive alacrity built into how it uh, releases new features for its audience. So while yes, the trend is slowing, it's also probably the picture just gets muddier the further uh, you go out in, in time. So I, I would highly doubt if I had my own crystal ball here telling me the answer, I would doubt that TikTok is going to plateau uh, at 2024. The only potential Achilles heel for TikTok is legislation. So if you're following the news, you probably heard that TikTok is being scrutinized uh, by the government in the US in terms of its practices. So if anything hobbles TikTok, it's going to be a, a political hobbling, but that remains to be seen. Uh, let's see. Do I need a business TikTok account to use ads manager? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead and create that account, and then you're off and running with ads. Uh, easy to do. Uh, in which section of ads manager do you enter in your URL you want to drive traffic to via a sticker or a call to action command? Um, the best way to solve that problem is go to the help center I just showed on your screen a moment ago, and that will solve that for you. Uh, that's a great TikTok question. Um, is TikTok best used for KPIs like video, video views or engagement, or can you achieve a return on ad spend over one on TikTok? Well, uh, the answer to this question is the KPIs that are best to measure for your TikToks 
or whatever your business cares about. So video views and engagement are metrics marketing cares about, and those are important. But if you're reporting the performance of your TikTok ads to your finance team, to your operations team, to your, to your board for that matter, um, you're gonna wanna move way past views and engagement into real top line sales, which is why I gave you the example around Tropical Smoothie Cafe, because uh, that's really what the business cares most about is you spent a dollar on TikTok, how many dollars did you give back to me as a result of that, of that campaign, which of course we illustrated for you uh, in the campaign example. We're now at the top of the hour and we have dozens of more questions to get through. I apologize, we're not gonna get to all of them, but we are certainly going to follow up uh, individually after the event. We are happy to entertain any questions you have. I, I, again, apologies for not being able to, to leave more time for questions. We had a ton of content to get through. Um, if you are curious about Reveal Mobile, and of course we think about this stuff all the time, and we talk about this stuff all the time, we have two places for you to go. First of all, our website, tried and true, revealmobile.com. And we also want you to check out all of our TikToks at Reveal Mobile, right? Hey, you're on TikTok, we're on TikTok, why not? Um, and we talk all about advertising technology, we talk all about social campaigns, we talk about geofencing, we talk about geoconquesting, we talk about attribution, anything that you might care about relative to <clears throat> digital ad spend, we are talking about that on TikTok. So get out there, uh, have some fun, leave us some comments and engage with our authentic, genuine and raw content. Uh, I wanna thank you all for joining us today. We have a ton of interest in today's session. Uh, please do take a look at, at uh, the Help Center and please do uh, follow us here at TikTok uh, at Reveal Mobile. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Take care. Oh, man.